This is the beginning of a special series where you get to follow along with a real person taking real accent coaching sessions from me. In this assessment session, you're going to meet Miguel, a tech coach and a creative coder from Ecuador. And you're going to hear him speak with his natural English accent and explain why he sought accent coaching with me. And together, we're going to identify his key struggles, such as intonation, syllable stress, and connected speech. And then, by the end, we'll come up with a long-term plan to help him. And I'm really excited for you to hear this, since it'll give you a clear idea of what goes on in a real accent coaching assessment session. Hi, I'm accent coach Bianca, and I'm here to help you because you might not know this, but your voice is your choice when it comes to your accent in English. I try to release a podcast episode every other week, and you can subscribe and get the show notes wherever you get your podcasts. And by the way, that includes YouTube for the full video version. Now let's get on with the show. So Miguel, we're going to have an assessment today, and we're going to have an action plan when we finish. So I have a couple of questions I want to ask you. I'd like to hear you talking for about five minutes so I can hear you kind of fluidly speaking. Then I have a thing that I want you to read that's specific for accent coaches because it has all the sounds that I'm looking for. And during that, I'll be taking notes. Then I'll, we'll look at our notes. I'll share my screen. We'll look at the notes together and see if all of that makes sense and where we can go from here. How does that sound? That sounds very good. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So in our chat box, I'm going to just throw in some questions there. If you don't want to answer any of them, it's totally fine. But here I want to get a sense of like how I can help you, right? More than anything else. So I'm just going to copy and paste in our chat box. Okay. Okay. So there's a couple of questions in there. And then when we finish so, uh, those, we'll just I, keep going. I, I read it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can read it and then just tell me and I'm just going to be taking notes. Okay. okay. What's your biggest challenge right now? Tell me about your background in English, past and present. Tell me more. Uh, oh, there are some questions, right? Mm -hmm. So my biggest challenge right now in English, I believe, is partially on the grammar part. Uh, because I noticed that, especially when I talk, a lot of uh, intricate grammar things, I am not able to do it, to do those perfectly. So I want to, to improve those. Mm -hmm. And also, I am very good at listening in English. I can understand most, almost anything. Uh, Maybe some accents are a little bit difficult, but that's like the part that I feel the most confident on. Mm. But the part of speaking in English is very tough, especially because when I am speaking, I get a little bit anxious. Mm. And then some of the words and things that I want to say start to, to disappear right on the spot. <laughs> and that's very tough. I, I noticed this uh, on these times because I joined at Night, Night of Nation and I have tried to, to speak with native and also people that speak English better than myself. And this part of conversi of, of, conversi of having the conversation, like I can do in, in Spanish, it seems to be super, super tough for me in English. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the part that I would like to improve. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my background in English, I learned English in school and then a little bit in college, but I stopped. And then I only had been using the internet the internet in English all the time and I believe that's the thing that helped me most but as you know I can talk to the internet it's very tough to practice in English in the internet uh, so that's the part that I feel like that's lacking mm -hmm. the most on, on myself mm -hmm. and the next question is tell me more about your motivation I would like to to create some videos for trying to explain a lot of technical stuff from my from the work that I can do mm -hmm. that I do and would love to do that on English uh, and also on Spanish, but I feel that on English it could help way more people than on Spanish because most of the internet is in English, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what's important to you in life regarding language? And as I also want, want to tell you that I would love to someday travel to, to maybe North America or, or any country, right? And having the ability to speak English very fluently would help you a lot to, to enjoy the travel, to meet people and all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Next question is, have you tried anything else to work books, courses? I have not. I have not tried anything uh, besides joining a few communities that are techni technically related, some, some mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. that stuff, but not, not something that's specific on English. I hadn't done that. This okay. would be my first time. 
Um, what language do you speak? I speak Spanish. I am a native Spanish speaker. Where are you living right now? I live in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. uh, Ecuador is located on South America. It's right at the center of the, of the earth. That's maybe what they call it, Ecuador. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me about the kind of work that I do. Uh, the kind of work that I do is a lot of technical stuff related with video and computers, uh, mm. especially with the artistic part. But I am trying to, I am leaning towards software developing. Oh, okay. Which which is also all, all all programming is done in English, right? Mm. Everything in programming is in English, so that's very important for me right now. Mm. And the last question is: Tell me about you, a specific time your accent made you feel frustrated. I feel like like my tongue uh, stops a lot in Spanish. Is <laughs> trabarse? I don't know how you say uh, that. In I'm not sure uh -huh, that one. Yeah, Maybe like when it works, uh, uh, as in trabajar. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What I, I, it's like I can get into a song that my tongue doesn't uh, trabarse. It just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, it it, it stops working. Mm, but mm -hmm, mm. I I don't know what causes. Maybe it's a little bit of anxiety. But I mm. I hope that by practice and also by a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of practice, I can I can make that better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So some more questions. What does a normal day in your life look like? Mm. I wake up. Uh, I usually don't have breakfast because mm -hmm. I am trying to fast. Mm. I'm a little fat. <laughs> <laughs> I want to lose a little bit of weight. But that's that's easy to wait for me to, to just don't eat because I love eating. I, mm. I eat a lot. Mm -hmm. Then then I begin working. I, I sit on my computer, open email, mm. try to make a rough plan of what I'm going to work at the day on mm -hmm. the day. And then I begin working. I I, I do a lot. Of, of scripting and programming for animation, for, for animation artists. But I also did videos. I also record, take photos, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I, I usually work almost all day. Then about 6 p.m. No, maybe earlier at 1 p.m. I, I have... I have... I forgot the word. <laughs> oh, lunch, lunch? Lunch, 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 right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I usually cook my lunch. So I, I love making potatoes, especially baking those because I try, I'm trying to eat more healthy mm. or healthier. Mm -hmm. and, and also meat, I love pork, meat, mm -hmm. beef, all that stuff. Then usually we, I eat with my girlfriend. My girlfriend has a, a veterinary and she lives, she goes to the veterinary. It's very far. It's like two blocks away from, mm. from our house. Mm -hmm. Then she comes to the house. We eat together and then she goes back to her work and I continue my work hmm. right here in, in my, in my house. Hmm. Then I work till about 6 p.m., 7 p.m., sometimes more. And then we eat, now, now I forgot the word for merienda. <laughs> <laughs> dinner maybe? Merienda. Dinner? Supper? Dinner, dinner, okay. dinner, right. Mm -hmm. um, then we watch typical, we watch, what's that program called? Diosas del... The shopping or some kind of program about shopping that my girlfriend likes on oh, okay. the entertainment. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Perfect. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it that, <laughs> I, that much, <laughs> but I watch it. You watch it with her anyways. Nice, nice. And yeah, that's that. Yeah, oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. That's very that's, clear. That's my typical day. Awesome, awesome. Yes. Very <laughs> nice. Okay, I have three more questions so, for uh, you. The and then I'll ask you if you have any okay. questions for me. And then we'll do the reading part. Okay, is that cool? Great. Should I continue? Yeah, we've those? got just three three more. I think there's three more in there, right? Okay. Tell me more about how do you decided to take classes with me. So I, I see you that you are like a real, real expert on nitpicking or, or <laughs> knowing what part of the accent is not working. Mm. And that blows my mind because before meeting you on, on, on our community, I didn't know that there was people that specialize it that much on, on this part that is super important right mm -hmm. and that's that's awesome that that's that's what drew me to trying and and learning from you and learn oh, from fantastic you. super super the, the next one is why now <laughs> yeah like, i feel, feel like, like you have time really important right now mm -hmm. yeah i have a little bit of time that that's also super important right okay but i have like this ball rolling how, how can you mm. see like to get the ball rolling, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Motivation, yeah. And I know if, if I some 
sometime stop, I probably won't take it back. I have to to wait for <laughs> a long time before I feel the motivation again. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to, to keep that. And also, if I don't do this, and if I don't improve my English, I really can make these videos in English and feel confident confident about them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's probably what motivates me the mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. The next one is what. What three topics are you most passionate to talk about? Uh, maybe on my career, are you asking? Mm, yeah, yeah. Like, especially in your case, since we're probably preparing a lot of videos and scripts, what topics do you most talk about in your videos? What are the main talking points so we can make sure all of that vocabulary, all of the, I don't know, intonation, connected speech, things like that on those topics sound really good? Hmm, probably... Uh, I most of the topics that I am probably going to talk, be talking about are technology related and mm -hmm. also video related mm. and also creativity related. I'm trying to position myself as a technology coach and mm -hmm. hopefully when when I feel ready, I, I will try to make like we are doing right now, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some kind of coaching uh, around technology, or maybe how to set up a, a podcast and that, that kind of stuff. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Technology coach. I love this. This is great. So most of your videos are going to be about how to get better at the technology part of creating videos and being creative in doing that. Is that kind of like the scope yeah. of your videos? Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Perfect. Perfect. All right. right. So do you have any questions for me right now? And if not, that's okay. And if not, then we'll move on to the reading part. I have a question. Since you specialize mostly on accent, accent coach, uh, is it going to be a problem for me to be lacking a little bit on some part of the grammar, especially because I feel that's uh, also a... Hmm. I think, okay, so there's two ways to kind of look at this. Number one, I could just correct your grammar when there's a mistake, right? We can just add mm -hmm. that into the mix. So for example, I think yeah. earlier you were saying on Spanish rather than in Spanish and on English rather than in English. So if that's something you want, I will just stop you and I'll say it's in, not on. And I, I can just do that along the way. But some people say, no, 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 yeah. Bianca, I'm just here for the accent. I'll pick up the preposition somewhere else, right? Fine. If it's a question of like, you're not saying that grammar thing correctly in the pronunciation, like, let's say on, you said un, let's say, and you didn't want mm -hmm. me to correct you to say in, then I can do that too. But I can make sure that you're saying the wrong thing correctly. Does that make sense? So I can either correct your grammar okay. or I can make sure what you're saying is correct, even if it's not grammatically correct. You see what I mean? So yeah. which do you no, I would like. I would like for you to, to correct me every, everything you can. Okay, cool. And even vocabulary too, for awesome. example? Yeah, Is yeah. Is that something? Okay. Yeah, because that, that's super tough, right? I, I, I feel like when you are hearing someone speaking in English, and if you don't know some part of the vocabulary, some word that, that they are saying, mm -hmm. uh, you can maybe infer what they are saying because of the context, but not actually know the word exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it would be it. awesome if uh -huh. you can help me with that. Perfect. Yeah. And especially since you're doing like technology kind of stuff, I can tell you, oh, like maybe this is the right word, but it doesn't make sense to me as like a user of this. Like I'm, I'm still not getting it. Maybe you need to use simpler terms or maybe you need to kind of yes. describe something because that's often a problem. It's not that the word is wrong because that's the word you're supposed to use. It's just that we, the listeners, we just may not know that. You know what I mean? So if that's the case and there's something there that doesn't make as much sense, then I'll stop you to and say, oh, let's find a different way to say this, especially if you're going to do a video, because yeah. that should be really, really clear. Okay, so I'm going to add that to the list. Super cool. Uh, cool, cool. Um, I'm going to call it vocabulary and, and phrasing too. So how you put things. Because if it doesn't make sense to me, it's probably not going to make sense to your audience. <laughs> and I don't know that much about technology. Yeah. So perfect, perfect. Okay, cool. So anything else that you want to ask me about right now? And if not, that's okay. No, I think that's about it. Okay, cool. So in the chat box, I'm going to send you a link to a document and it's just a little story. It's just a text that I want you to read and it's a silly story. It doesn't make sense really, but it doesn't have to because it just has all the sounds that I'm looking for. So that's the thing that I want you to yeah. read out loud and I want you to read it actually two times if you can. And the reason I want you to read it two times is because the first time you read it, I'm going to be listening for your pronunciation right? When we talk about accent and accent coaching, we talk about four P's, we call them. The four P's. So we've got pronunciation, 
That's the first one. That would be like if you said D instead of the, right? Maybe that's not a big deal. Like you said, the context can sometimes help that out. But if there's two words that are similar or you make a mistake and that word doesn't make any sense, that's pronunciation. The second one is prosody. And prosody is the music of your voice. So the connected speech, the rhythm, the intonation, those kinds of things, right? And making mistakes there just might feel a little weird. So we'll look at pronunciation and prosody. And for most people, that's all they need. But because you're doing videos, I think we need to think of the other two Ps, right? Number three, it's oral posture. The P is posture. So making sure that if there's some muscle tension that exists there or some pattern of your muscles from Spanish, probably, that we work on that muscles so that when you switch to English, your muscles are kind of doing a different thing. Does that make sense? That third one, the oral mm, posture. Yeah, wow. yeah, how you hold yeah. your mouth. And then number four, for you, very important, anybody who's working on videos or has you know some kind of branding to worry about, then that one is person or personality. So when you have your videos, is that the normal Miguel that's speaking or is that like the teaching Miguel? And how does your voice kind of come out in those personality things or that, that personhood, right? So I might have like a teaching voice if I'm teaching in a classroom and then I might have my like at home voice and you might have like the girlfriend voice or you might have like I'm talking to the dog right now voice, right? And so you might have a different voice that you develop for your videos. Does that make sense? Those four things? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. So the link that I'm giving you now is the story that I want you to read out loud. And I want you to read it two times because now we're going to think about pronunciation mistakes. And then we're going to think about the other one, the prosody, right? So now we're going to read this. Uh, the first time I want you to read really slowly and I'm going to be taking notes, but that's not why I want you to read slowly. I want you to read slowly so that I can hear you make mistakes and usually when we slow down, we make more mistakes because my brain is like, wait, is it this or is it this? And so here's the target speed. I'm going to read the first sentence. Here's a story for you. I want all the words to be kind of separate. Do you see what I mean? And I want yeah, you to make mistakes. Okay. Your job right now is to make mistakes. And my job is to collect the mistakes. And then we're going to organize them and see what's most effective for you. We'll put them in order. We'll prioritize them. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay, nice and slow, whenever you're ready. Okay. Coma gets a cure. Well, here's a story for you. Sarah Perry was a veterinary nurse who had been working daily at an old zoo in a deserted district of the territory. So she was very happy to start a new job at a superb private practice in North Square near the Duke Street Tower. That area was much nearer for her and more to her liking. Even so, on her first morning, she felt stressed. She ate at a bowl of Orich checked herself in the mirror and washed her face in a hurry. Then she put on a plain yellow dress and a fleece jacket, picked up her kit and headed for work. When she got there, there was a woman with a goose waiting for her. The woman gave Sarah, an official letter from the pet. The letter implied that the animal could be suffering from a rare form of foot and mouth disease, which was surprising, because normally you would only expect to see it in a dog. Sarah was sentimental, so this made her feel sorry for the beautiful bird. Before long, that itchy goose began to strut around the office like a lunatic, which made an unsanit unsanitary mess. An unsanitary mess. The goose owner, Mary Harrison, kept calling, comma, comma, which Sarah thought, thought that was a not choice for a name. Comma was strong and huge, so... 
it would take some force to trap her, but Sarah, but Sarah had a different idea. First, she tried gently stroking the goose, the goose's lower back with her paw, then singing a tune to her. Finally, she administered either. She is she administered either her air force her air force. This is tough for me. Mm-hmm. This one. Her efforts were not futile, futile, mm-hmm. futile. There you go. In no time, the goose began to tire, so Sarah was able to hold on to coma and give her a relaxing bath. When Sarah had managed to bat the goose, she wiped her she wiped her off with a cloth and laid her on her right side. Then Sarah confirmed the vet's diagnosis. Then Sarah confirmed the vet's diagnosis. Almost immediately, she remembered an effective treatment that required her to measure out a lot of medicine. Sarah warned that this course of treatment might be expensive, either five or six times the cost of penicillin. I can't imagine paying so much but Miss Mr. Mrs. Harrison, mm-hmm. a millionaire lawyer, thought it was a fair price for a cure. Woo! Awesome, awesome. This is a reading that many accent coaches and dialect coaches will use, and it comes from uh, a woman who said yes, and you can use this as long as you you know tell people that where it comes from, right? So this is called "Comma Gets a Cure." This is one of the texts that we'll use because it has all the things we're looking for, and it doesn't matter which English. You use if you use Australian English versus New Zealand or South African, doesn't matter because all those sounds are are already included in there. So yeah, okay, cool. So now I've, we got the pronunciation part where I've got all the sounds because you were reading nice and slowly, and I only care about the patterns more than anything else, right? So if you make one mistake, eh, it's probably a mistake. But if you do something two or three times, then it goes on the list, right? And maybe we're going to investigate a little bit more. So second time through, now that you know the story, you're just going to read it normally, you know, as normally as you can while you're reading at whatever pace, whatever speed is comfortable to you. This time I'm looking for what we call prosody. So connected speech, syllable stress, rhythm, intonation, those kinds of things, right? More about the the music of your voice. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So whatever speed's comfortable to you, go right through it again whenever you're ready. So come on, get secure. Well, here's a story for you. Sarah Perry was a veterinary nurse who had been working daily at an old zoo in a deserted district of the territory. So she was very happy to start a new job at a superb private at a superb private practice in North Square near the Duke Street Tower. That area was much nearer for her and more to her liking. Even so, on her first morning, she felt stressed. She ate at a bowl of porridge, checked herself in the mirror, and washed her face in a hurry. Then she put on a plain yellow dress and a fleece jacket, picked up her kit, and headed for work. When she got there, there was a woman with a goose waiting for her. The woman gave Sarah an official letter from the vet. The letter implied that the animal that the animal could be suffering from a rare from from a rare form of foot and mouth disease, which was surprising because normally you would only expect to see to see it in a dog or a goat. Sarah was sentimental, so this made her feel sorry for the beautiful bird. Before long, that itchy goose began to strut around the office like a lunatic, which made an unsanitary mess. The goose, the goose's owner, Mary, Mary Harrison, kept calling, comma, comma, which, which Sarah thought was an old choice for a name. Comma was, an, comma was a strong and huge, so it would take some force to trap her, but Sarah had a different idea. First, she tried gently stroking the goose's lower back with her palm, then singing a tune to her. Finally, she administered either. Ether. Ether, sorry. <laughs> her efforts were not futile. Were not futile. Futile. In no time, the goose began to tire, and so Sarah was able to hold on to coma and give her a relaxing bath. Once Sarah had managed to bath the goose, she wiped her off with a cloth 
and led her on, the, on her right side. Then Sarah confirmed that the best that the bets that the bets that diagnosed sorry sorry. Then Sarah confirmed that then Sarah confirmed the bet the bets diagnosis. Almost immediately she remembered an effective tri- treatment that required her to measure out a lot of medicine. Sarah warned that this course of treatment might be expensive, either five or six times the cost, the cost of penicillin. I can't imagine by paying so much, but Ms. Mrs. Harrison, a millionaire lawyer, thought it was a fair price for a cure. Awesome, awesome. How does that feel now? Yeah, it felt much better, but when I read a word that I don't know exactly how to read, I like become anxious, anxious mm-hmm. and then it messes up my reading for a little bit of time. Until yeah, I you're like trip over it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, you're like wait, yeah. what? and then yeah, like when you trip on the sidewalk and you keep kind of stumbling a little bit, right? Totally, totally normal. <laughs> yeah. Some people like really get paralyzed by that, and there's a name for that. That's called affective block. Affect meaning your emotions. Mm-hmm. You're blocked by your emotions. You're like wait, but I have all this language. Happens to me in Spanish all the time, right? Depending on maybe who I'm speaking to or what the context is or how kind of confident I feel about the material, you know, or the, or the content. So that's something to think about for you. You can make a list and we'll talk about this later for your affect block. Like when is it happening? Monitoring that because, you know, for some people they're very camera shy. And so that's going to compound the effect. And then, like you said, though, for some people, it's, it's just a matter of doing it more often and getting comfortable with it. So that's kind of behind all of this, right? Maybe you wouldn't normally make a mistake, but this person walks into the room and then suddenly you're making those these stupid mistakes that you never make, right? That's your affective block. Totally normal, totally something we can work on, but it's, it colors everything else sometimes, right? You're like, I know that. I don't, why did I do that? So that totally happens as well. So anything that I say right now, we're going to go over the notes. Anything there, you might think like, oh, that doesn't usually happen. Or you might think, oh, that's something that happens all the time. It doesn't matter if I'm nervous. So that might kind of change things. You see what I'm saying about that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Now I just need to share my screen. So I'm going to just switch some things around oh. there. Okay. So you can see that now, right? You can see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Also, I'm going to maybe make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So at the top, these are just the questions that we started with. Now we're going to go over any of the, my notes and we're going to have a plan for you. And if there's anything that you don't understand, just stop me. It's totally fine. In the beginning, these were just the notes that I was taking when you were answering those questions. So later, if you see a mistake, then just let me know. I'm going to email this to you later, but obviously I don't want to put your email up right now. So let's start with this analysis, right? You said grammar. Yeah, check. I, I noticed especially it's prepositions. That's mostly what it is, right? So if you're feeling anxiety about the grammar and you just focus on prepositions, I can give you some review stuff to do. I think a lot of that's going to clear up. Other than that, I didn't hear a lot of grammatical mistakes like in your tenses or anything like that. Maybe you're kind of holding back and you're not using more complicated sentence structures because you feel like you might make mistakes. But in your videos, we can look at scripts, right? And we can say, oh, we can maybe make this a little more complex or we can make this one a bit simple to kind of increase the variety. So I'm not hearing a lot of mistakes, but I think you're also playing it safe. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Okay. Cool. Cool. As we said, affective block, we said we're going to think about vocabulary and phrasing too when we get to some of your video stuff. So here's what's interesting though. I think you've been doing English a long time and some people in other parts of the world have too, but even though they've been doing it a long time, it's not that kind of like consolidated and it's still kind of choppy. But I think because you've done so much on the internet, that's a lot of like natural language that you're exposed to. So you have a lot of good patterns. Normally when I talk about what do we need to fix? What do we need to think about? It's three things. Number one, are you hearing something? Because if you don't hear it, you're probably not going to be able to do it. Can you hear? Is it a problem with like hearing the difference between something? Or is it like, oh, I hear it, but I don't know what to do? Is it like, I don't know where to put my tongue, like you said? Or is it an emotional block? Or is there a lack of information there? I think that might be the case in your case. Like, I think you're missing some information that even though you can hear it, you can't do it because you don't know what to do. So some people, they can hear it, they know what to do, 
but then they can't physically do it because they haven't had enough practice with it. There's no muscle mm -hmm. memory there. So I think mainly what's missing is some awareness about some things, right? And once you know them, then you can practice it. And I think it'll be fine. Does that make sense where I think the problems are? I don't think you can't hear it. I think you're just missing some information to put into practice. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree totally. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So that's easy. <laughs> that's actually not a bad place to start. So awesome. In terms of prioritizing, I'm going to highlight in yellow the things that I think that will be most effective. And the other things are like, they're there, but, you know, maybe they're not something to worry about. So we're just talking accent right now. We're talking pronunciation first. Vowels, I think we can review some of the vowels because I think because you've had all this input, a lot of your words are really good because, you know, the spelling in English is really difficult. But you're getting a lot of these things where other people would make mistakes. And I think that's because you've had a lot of input and you I think you have a good ear and you're picking it up. But there's some things that your brain just doesn't know. So I'd like to kind of review the vowels so you can say, oh, oh, I just didn't know it's supposed to be this sound. So I think that'll be some Great. easy fixes once you know that. Because sometimes it could be three things. For vowels, it's always three things. Your jaw, how open your jaw is. Your lips, if they're rounded or not and where your tongue is, right? And I know sometimes you're blocked and your tongue doesn't work, but at least if your brain knows <laughs> what to do, yeah. you kind of, yeah, you get that practice and you relax, then, then it'll be good. So I'd like to review the vowels, but I don't think there's anything there that you can't hear and that you can't do. I think they're often just mislabeled and you're like, oh, it's not this one. It's this one, yeah. right? So that's in terms of vowels. And number two kind of goes with that because I don't know if you've heard this term schwa, but we have, sure. you know, in, in Spanish, you have five vowels and you say five vowels, super easy, right? But in English, we write five vowels, but we say almost 30 different sounds. And this one, <laughs> yeah, this one, schwa, it has a name because the spelling is all over the place, but it's the most important one. So I'd like to focus on that one because when you're speaking quickly and you've got your reduced words that they are always using schwa when they can be, and that way your rhythm also sounds good. You've already got good rhythm and we can make it a little bit better that way. But also when you slow down, I think it's that thing where your brain is like, do I really know which sound this should be? Yeah. Not that I'm reducing. A lot, a lot of insecurity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or just lack of knowledge, I think it is. But put those two together and then you're blocked. So when you go slow, like sometimes it's not that it's reduced, but it should be schwa too. But you wouldn't know that because, you know, lack of knowledge. And then also like you, you didn't know that has a name and the spelling isn't related. So I want to focus a little bit on schwa too. Does that make sense that schwa is one of the vowels, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's the most important one? Okay, perfect, perfect. So obviously not highlighted though, because it's not the main issue. So these also three, four, and five, they're details, but let's talk about them anyways. So you have a great L, you have a great R, which is not easy in English at all. And then coming from Spanish, you have completely different mm -hmm. R. Right. So your R's are already really good. And I know in Spanish you have two kinds of R's and you have the, the rolled R and then you have the little tap R. Right. And we have two kinds of R's, too, but they're not the same kinds of R's. So you have something I want to just dig into a little bit later. We're going to just make sure both of your R's are good because we have two. I'm a little like curious about your what we call vocalic R and R after a vowel. That could be a little bit better. We could polish it a little bit. And then also in English, we have two kinds of L's. And one of them is called a dark L when you find it at the end of a word, slightly different. So in general, good R's and L's, but I want to dig in there a little bit later, if that's okay. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Here's another one too. Again, it's a high level. It's an, an advanced thing, but it's something you could think about, especially if you're going to be this, how should we say, if you're going to be a public figure online and mm -hmm. having videos is at the ends of words, especially... We have different kinds of T sounds and D sounds. You don't really know this from the spelling. You do it sometimes because I think you've gotten a lot of input. So you just do it naturally, but you might not know, oh, here's where I do this variation and here's where I do this variation. So I think we can break down these final T's and D's, make sure you can do all four variations and you know what your choices are there, right? Again, very advanced, but I think it's something, you know, you might want to work on. Does that make sense? Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. 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 Yeah. Okay. Also, a lot of people... I'm going to allow my microphone to hopefully pick this up. Can you hear? Can you hear my air there? Yeah. Okay, good. So you can hear that. Plosive, plosive. Yes, the, your plosive sounds. Exactly. So the air that's coming out, right? You have a really good amount of air. A lot of times people are too quiet. They hold back mm -hmm. too much. Once in a while, they spit all over the place, but that's not very common. But your amount of air is really good. 
But just like we have these variations of T's and D's, right? T, t, that's a plosive sound. Your P's and K's, P, K. We want to look at where it is in the word. Is it at the beginning? Is it at the middle? Is it at the end? Because we can vary that amount of air, right? Not as much as T's, but P's and K's too. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's super interesting. Awesome. Yeah, I knew you would like that too. So again, high level <laughs> stuff, but it's on the back burner right now. Something that's on the front burner... I don't know if it's true in your accent of Spanish, but I know in Mexico, if you see the letter Z, you just say an S. And that's something I have trouble with in Spanish. I see yeah. a Z, I go Z, right? And they're like, no, it's S. I'm like, but it's a Z. Why are you writing Z mm -hmm. if it's not Z? So the opposite is true for some speakers of Spanish. I don't know if this is true of all the accents. But at the end of a word, sometimes you're dropping it. And sometimes you're just not yeah, what we yeah. call voicing. This vocal box or vocal folds or vocal cords, whatever you want to call them, it should be vibrating sometimes. So sometimes when it should be vibrating, you're not vibrating. And so we want to make sure that is correct in each instance. Maybe your brain just doesn't know that in English, for example, take this S. If I said these two words, even though they're both ending in letter S, one of them sounds like a Z, right? So that might be not something you don't know. We have a chart. We can go over that. So this one should be zzz, bags, gzz. So sometimes bags. you're dropping the end and sometimes you're, we could say half dropping it because you're not voicing it. And that could be true in any of these combinations. So this is something I definitely want to look at after vowels is when should you be voicing? Clearly you can do it. I just heard you. But I think again, I think it's like, oh, I didn't know I'm supposed to do this here, but not here, right? Yeah. It's, the letter S, how are you supposed to know? It's not you, it's English. So does that example make sense? Yeah, I was on your on your Thursday monthly masterclass. Uh -huh. And that was the first time that I gained this knowledge about ah. that some words in English, you don't have to voice the vocal folds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's only some of the words. That, yes. that was <laughs> a, a really, really new thing for me. Because in you know Spanish, that? you almost mm -hmm. never do that. Yeah. Uh, almost yeah, yeah. Nev maybe never. Yeah, you have an S at the end, you especially at the things. end. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that could that could be larger. It could be like it should be g g g instead of k k k, right? And I I think it depends on which you know dialect of Spanish. But maybe the ends of words in Spanish aren't as important either. So maybe you're just like meh. Who who needs it? You know. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So we can go through that too. So that was oh, the first reading, the pronunciation part. Now let's look at the prosody. Oh, by, by the way, do you have any questions about this stuff in the, in the pronunciation? No, I, I think it's, it's pretty clear. Okay, awesome, yeah. awesome. And if not, then just stop me anytime. So we'll start to work on those ones that are highlighted first, then we'll see how, about those. So I think, again, because you have had so much exposure from the internet and very natural language, you have really good prosody. So we might think about making it stronger. And also telling your brain, hey, did you know this is what you're doing? <laughs> this is what you're doing. This is how you can make it better. So maybe talking a little bit about it. For example, syllable stress in Spanish is so different than in English, right? You have different rules. How you do it is different. So for us in English, you have really good syllable stress for a Spanish speaker. Here's two things, though. Sometimes it's on the wrong syllable. Let's say veterinarian, right? You're like, well, where's the stress there? Maybe that's because yeah, yeah. in Spanish it's very close but you're just applying that pattern. So maybe it's just on the wrong syllable. No problem. We just say, oh, it's on this one. If somebody said to me, syllable, instead of syllable, <laughs> easy to fix because you can hear it because it's very strong. You say, ah, it's on the wrong syllable. I know it is because you did a good job stressing it. Eh, it's just on the wrong one. But sometimes the other problem is it's not strong enough. So you might be like, Syll syllable. So da, da, da. which one's stressed? I don't know, <laughs> right? So, but maybe that's because in Spanish, it's just not as much of a jump in the stress. Or maybe you're mm -hmm. holding back because you're like, well, I don't really know which one is supposed to be stressed. So I'm maybe just going to play it safe. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I do notice that when you are going slowly, like reading, you're making more mistakes, which that tells me you're not sure. Mm -hmm. And then when you go fast, yeah, I guess the yeah, maybe maybe you're trusting yourself more, or maybe you're guessing. But I find that it's very strong. Your syllable stress is stronger, so we can break it down. We can say, oh, well, how do I stress a word, or how do I stress a syllable, and then which one could I be better at? Because there's three parts to that, and then which part is kind of missing here, right? Or is it just I don't know and I'm hiding? Because I would prefer somebody to say it really strong 
but be wrong so we can fix it rather than like hiding yeah. those mistakes. Yeah. So whenever we see a syllable stress mistake, we'll just pick that up and we'll go over those. What makes good syllable stress? So connected right. speech, yes. like we said, connected speech is very good. Your flow is very easy to listen to. As we said, it's just sometimes the ends, the ends are not as clear as they could be. So then their connections aren't as good. Does that make sense? Those two mm. things? I, may, maybe not, not that much. But okay. I don't know what part of the end is. I, I don't know how to differentiate. differentiate sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, when you have to end, for instance, on a high note, on a higher pitch, on mm -hmm. some of the of the things that you're talking. Oh, okay. Because on Spanish, it's almost, I feel like, especially in my town, it's almost mm -hmm. like downwards. Mm -hmm. okay. you, you talk. Uh huh. What you're referring to is intonation, right? So when you say the pitch and how I'm ending a phrase, that's intonation. Maybe I'm not clear enough. Here, what I mean is when I say connected speech, for example, I say this, disp, 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 oh. right? Between the words, how am I connecting the words, right? Mm -hmm. For example, here, I should try to get that as close as possible, disp, right? You don't do this mm -hmm. thing, which a lot of people who speak Spanish do. You don't stick a little e eh in here. You don't say connected e speech, right? A lot of people mm -hmm. have a hard time with that. So you're good at blending these consonants, let's say. And for example, here, e to g. There is no connection there and you're not making one. You're not forcing it. And this is a good place to maybe stop and breathe. So your connected mm -hmm. speech is actually good. When you're talking about intonation, that's a little bit different. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. And we're going to talk about intonation in a second. Well, let me go back to this. So your syllable stress, we said like, sometimes it's off. It's on the wrong syllable. And sometimes it's just not strong enough. But you do have a good base of syllable stress. And I think that's why you have a good rhythm. And especially for videos, this is important because we want to stress the important words. Otherwise, we'll sound kind of flat. People don't know what's important to us. It makes you a little bit more mm -hmm. dynamic, right? And so I think you have a good base of rhythm. I think we could turn it up a little bit to be even more dynamic in your videos. Maybe not quite overdoing it, but making it more stronger, just a little bit stronger because you're teaching and you want a little more dynamic voice in your videos. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then yeah. balancing that with the reduction of the, especially using that schwa, like we said. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Last thing is intonation. And so as we said, intonation, I, I think that's it. You're like, oh, well, this is how we do intonation. It's not necessarily universal. It feels like it should be, but it's definitely not. So if you have this international audience speaking in a way mm -hmm. where also maybe look at who your audience is, but if the receivers are expecting a certain pattern to your pitch, right? That just makes a better connection. So intonation has two functions. Number one, it shows attitude or emotion, or it shows yeah. what I want to do. So for example, you know how some people seem to be very like emotionless and to us, like yeah. you don't really connect with that. I think especially in your videos, you want to have clarity in what you want them to do. And also you want to be expressing in a way that they can pick it up you know, in that intonation. So that, I am going to highlight that because in terms of prosody, I would say that's the place where we can make the most gains, I would say is in your intonation. And again, you can have your video voice, you can have like video Miguel speaking, and then you don't have to change your other voices or you can turn it off and you can turn it on. So this will be something that you can play around with depending on who you're speaking to. Yeah. Does that, so I have one little extra thing. Well, two extra things, but one we already talked about. We talked about the block and that's, that's going to go away from the practicing, from just putting yourself out there. <laughs> and I'm yeah, going to make you make a lot of videos, so don't worry. A lot of recordings. You're just going to be oh, really so used cool. to it. Mm -hmm. And that's going to make your confidence go up and that's going to make your block go down. But this last thing is something that a lot of people don't know about. And when you look it up, it, it can be very confusing. But especially if you're going to do videos, I don't mean pitch. I don't mean do you have a naturally high voice or a naturally low voice. What I mean is your placement. So if you're speaking from your head, or if you're speaking from your chest, even though you might have the best microphone in the world, if you're the kind of person that is speaking from their head, which depending on your language or your culture, or, then if you're speaking from your head, there's an opportunity there that we miss because if your audience is a chest speaking audience, they're just not going to connect 
in that way. So I want to show you this trick of placement where you can lower your placement when you turn on your video voice. And then it, it sounds, at least culturally, it sounds to us like you have more authority about what you're talking about. We can turn that off and on. You can code switch to have video voice goes down in your chest. And then anytime you want, you can put your head voice back in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a, that sounds super awesome. Okay. So what questions do you have right now, if anything? No, I, I actually feel very, very good about this because it, it makes me feel super confident because you know exactly what should I, what are the steps, what, what should I be doing in uh -huh, my uh -huh. English speaking, yeah. Oh yeah, no question, no question. And like before people do this, they might think, oh, I have so many problems. And then we look at it, we're like, well, we just highlighted three things and we said, hey, if these three <laughs> things are good, like 80% of your problems are gone. <laughs> so if we focus on this 20%, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything else is gone. And we said a big part of it is the affective block. So once you start feeling good, a lot of those mm -hmm. things are probably just going to disappear on their own with a little bit of knowledge, and a little bit of practice, right? Yeah, yeah, good. So what's next? Yeah. Today, we're going to do our assessment. The next time I see you, I think we can start with vowels, unless you have something else that you want to work with. But let's think about what you should do between now and then. So number one, you just read this thing, comma gets a cure. There's another one called the Rainbow Passage, and I want you to read both of those. You'll click on this link, and it will take you to uh, a secure site that's just for teachers and, and clients and students, and you sign in with Microsoft or Google. And the only people who can see this are me and the other people I work with. So I'd like you to record that. It's video. Record yourself saying the whole story of Comic Gets a Cure again, and the other one called the Rainbow Passage. That should take you about 15 minutes. Is, is that okay? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, both, and, right? Yeah, Come, uh, and you don't have to write it down because remember, I'm going to email you these notes. So you don't have to write oh, it yeah, down. Nice. Yeah, you'll just yeah, click on the link. Awesome. Awesome. Two more quick things before we're finished for today. Number one, especially because we said, hey, what are the three topics you're going to be talking about? If you can think of any words or questions you have around that topic, maybe about how you should say a certain phrase or is there a more simple way to say it? Or, hey, here's a word I always say and I'm not quite sure if it's right. Mm -hmm. Just make notes here on any words that come to your mind that are very important to you, very meaningful. And you can park them in, the, in your parking lot. And then next time I see you, we'll go over those words first. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. And then last thing is, you know, if, if you want to see me once a week, if you want to see me twice a month, if you want to see me once a month only, you can change all of that stuff through Patreon. Or if you want to join an extra club as well, that's on Patreon too. And I think, tell me if you want to do something different, but I think we'll work on the vowels first. We have these, if you want to look ahead, that's fine. We have these 13 sounds. We're going to go over this chart and make sure they're perfect and make sure you know, like, ah, Ah, okay. I didn't know this was different from this one or, oh, I'm supposed to do this one in this word. Okay. No problem. I want to review the, what we call the articulation. We said your jaw, your tongue, your lips for those 13 sounds. And then when we find mistakes, I'll say, ah, it's uh as in book, not ooh as in boot, for example. And so that's we'll, perfect. That, we'll that's be able to perfect. fix it. Okay. So I think vowels next, unless you have any other thoughts. And besides that, do you have any other specific questions for me right now? No, that's perfect. I feel like these vowels, I usually confuse them between them. Mm. So that's probably the, uh, improving that would be super helpful because I, I feel like those vowels are the things that make my tongue like get stuck mm -hmm. and like I get stuck on the words that have some tough vowels. And also you mentioned the word software. Yeah. That has that those three letters. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like there are some words, but I don't remember. I read one in comma get secured that mm -hmm. I don't remember what which one was. But I uh -huh. I'll make sure to put it in the parking lot. That that's super cool. Yeah. Part particularly really words that are related to your work. If it was in comma yeah, get yeah. secure, it's you're probably never gonna say it again. Right. But <laughs> and if you have a question, that's fine. But if you're like, you know, you're at work and, and you're thinking like, oh, just throw it in the list. And we'll take a look at it. And there might be some patterns there, you know? So it might be other things that we haven't yet discovered. As we dig deeper, we're going to see those things. So anytime you think of something, throw it in the parking lot. And then we'll review those later. Sound good? Sounds super cool. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So I will see you next week. And we're going to be talking about vowels first, yeah? Yeah, Bianca. This was super cool. Thank you so much. Oh, awesome. Very cool. So I will see you next week then. Yeah, Bianca. Bye. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Bye. 
And thank you very much for listening. My hope in recording and sharing these real one-on-one sessions is that if you share the same experiences and frustrations as Miguel, you'll also feel the triumph and satisfaction as he improves. And he will improve, I promise you that. And I know some people feel anxious or unsure about what to expect from accent coaching. So now that you've heard what it's like to be a real client of mine, and if you're serious about improving your accent, now is the time to seek expert help because you deserve to sound as clear and knowledgeable as I know you are. So be like Miguel and start today. And please don't forget to rate and review this podcast because it really does help me more than you might think. And if you're not ready to commit to one-on-one sessions, join my free monthly masterclass to see how it is. In just two hours, you're going to master a specific American accent skill, like the THs or the dark L or rhythm. And all you have to do is sign up to my mailing list and you'll get the registration link each month. The opt-in link is down in the show notes. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach. And remember, your voice is your choice. And I'll see you in the next episode, where Miguel will be tackling some specific words that he struggles a lot with. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye for now.